First person this week is the newly elected county executive of Newcastle County, Tom Gordon. He's a familiar face to the job. He once held that position in the last decade. Mr. Gordon, welcome. What, what are the differences between 2003 and now here in 2013 returning to your old office? Um, I found the land use code, a lot of the protections were put in were dismantled over the last eight years. And that a, has a tremendous effect on the, on the county, as you've seen with the, some of the recent concerns with uh, development. That's uh, been very problematic. Did you find uh, you sort of remember the, sort of the way things were uh, just running the office? I haven't uh, done it for eight years. Yeah, it was like I've never left, and it's scary because I'm getting old. I don't know <laughs> if I'm getting dementia or not, but sometimes I don't remember leaving for eight years. Right. So much of it is the same, and, but some of it's different. You know, I know you touched on the whole barley mill development, but we'll get to that in a second. But we do want to get quick reaction from you about the shooting at the court, Newcastle County Courthouse. How did you hear about it? Um, the chief of police uh, was one of the first ones on the scene from the county. Um, he responded there and he took control of the situation with Wilmington Police. And together they, they did a search of the floors, apprehended uh, uh, the, uh, the father who was still there. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, our paramedics were on the scene first, so I, I was getting calls from both the police department and paramedics immediately letting me know what was going on. And, uh, uh, you know, a serious situation, but it was just a, it was a domestic going bad. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. there a moment of disbelief that, wow, this happened at the courthouse? And, and Yep, you know, you don't know if it's a terrorist or if it's a, if it's a local problem. And that's a case that the county police had had mm -hmm. for years involving that family. So we were well schooled on it. Uh, the uh, chief knew exactly the, the players in the family and, and he was able to provide a lot of information to, uh, to get the case under control quickly. Now are you involved in any of the planning for any new possible security measures at the courthouse? I, I don't know that it will be. It's a state issue. Um, um, if the mayor's involved, I'm sure he'll include me. But uh, I mean there's some things that I've read about they want to do. Uh, but if somebody wants to take a life, it's very tough. So it's like the kamikaze pilots in mm -hmm. World War II. If you uh, are going to go in there and kill yourself, it, it's very tough to stop. And I think they're going to run up against that. Uh, you, you mentioned land use uh, in, in the beginning in the UDC and, and the changes uh, in that area. Obviously, a, a big issue in Newcastle County land planning. Uh, and, and the biggest one right now, Barley Mill. Is that something that can be made uh, acceptable to the community the, the way the plans are now? I know it's in court now and going through that I, I process. I think it typified how out of control it got by letting developers change the code without anybody knowing about it in the last eight years. Both county executives were involved in it. So what you end up with is the largest development plan with no traffic. How outrageous is that? I mean, they just got so far out of control that it's going to take a lot to put it back in. We're going we're gonna to hire a consultant. We're going to begin immediately to uh, put some protections back in place, and we're going to come out with a whole series of ethics reforms so that this can't happen again. Mark touched on the UDC Unified Development Code. What exactly is that? Because some people think it means suburban sprawl. It was Others a set of codes that put in, in, in under law how development would be engaged in Newcastle County. Mm -hmm. And it took into consideration stuff called concurrency, which is roads, sewers, schools. And all that was overridden. Just, uh, uh, quietly and secretively so that uh, things like this could take place and they would say it's by right, there's nothing you can do about it. And uh, to put that back in place, uh, I did it in 97. We did it with a moratorium, but right now the economy is very fragile. So we have to do it kind of with a surgeon's knife and try to figure out how to get controls back in place, put ethics back in place, and not destroy the economy. So it's, uh, I've been working on it since that day I took office and spent a couple hours a day uh, trying to get to this point. Dealing with live uh, issues like barley mill and others that are just outrageous and at the same time trying to keep an eye on how we we get the uh, cow back in the barn so to speak. Okay, how many brown fields are there in Newcastle County and what's your thought on developing those areas? Well, there were very few brown fields and what they did is I wrote some language dealing with brown fields given liberal interpretations if you had one of the, I think there were seven or eight at the time, and they included redevelopment, then redevelopment became anything they choose, including a farmer's field. Mm -hmm. And they just outrageously went around the code. And uh, what we're getting now is a lot of uh, bad development. Is it, is it something that's different this time around, it being in office, than, than when you were in before, uh, trying to sort of delicately walk that balance between economic development and encouraging job growth 
and, and sort of keeping uh, development where you want it to go and where there is support for it. Right. In 97, there was a better economy statewide. Right now, there's not. And there was code that was destroying it and brought it all together. Um, so right now, you're dealing with an economy that's worse, but development code that doesn't exist. And when you take it apart like that, you give property rights to everybody. There's probably 60, 70 plans out there that are not good and they have a property right so how do you deal with that and they did that whole they put everything everything um under different titles just to allow you know unobstructive growth wherever they chose uh you have a budget coming out uh, next month you'll deliver to uh to county council uh can you hold the line on taxes well, what is that budget going to look like we're uh, we're not raised taxes but we're still at the early stages of um Media, you've you got five or six large departments. We've been dealing with police department in, in reform and, and changes. As you know, with land use and sewers, they're your big ones. You've got to get under control. At the same time, it slowed me up a little bit. I'm further behind now than I should be in um, deciding what the budget's going to look like. We're starting to meet with the departments and see what we can practically handle to fix the problems at the same time move forward with policing, for example. So uh, we're certainly not going to raise taxes. We might draw down on some revenue, but it's still early to tell. But we hope in a year and a half we can try to turn it around. Won't be able to turn around in two months, but mm -hmm. I hope in, we're doing some things with the sewer to try to get development spurred a little bit where we want it. Drive it to the growth areas where we want, not, not to where it's going now. And is, does the state have a role in, in assisting the county, uh, or, or, or is that? State has a big role because when we do a development plan, they have to do the roads. So mm -hmm. they're very much connected, and that's why it's, it's just outrageous that we don't have concurrency, meaning you've you got to deal with the roads. If you're going to build and you're going to open up, before you open up, somebody has to agree on who's going to pay for the roads, or otherwise you just, you know, you just destroy the quality of life. And that's what's been done. Have you met with Wilmington Mayor uh, Dennis Williams on any projects that the county and the city can collaborate on? All the time. We're talking about sewers, we're talking about uh, policing mainly. Mm -hmm. And so he's been in office three or four weeks. You know, he's, I had the opportunity, as you know, coming in two months ahead of him. So I'm letting him catch up and he's doing really well. And, but he's dealing with live situations when you get in office. You know, he's got shootings and trying to turn that around, which he will. Mm -hmm. And together we're gonna, we're gonna make it a lot better, I'm sure, for citizens of Wilmington and Newcastle County. Do you think the city should be allowed to expand its borders any more We're into the We're going to be county? working on, yeah, enterprise zones. I mean, if you look at the areas outside the city, you look at uh, uh, Edgemore, you look at Route 9, uh, there's no reason we can't work together on what we call enterprise zones here or try to allow the city some expansion so they don't have to necessarily raise the taxes on the, you know, the, the, the 70,000 that are still living there. And the mayor and I are talking about a lot of exciting things. All right, and we'll, we'll keep following it with you. Uh, Newcastle County Executive Thank Tom you for Gordon. the opportunity to come and talk to you all. Thank you very much for being here and uh, being our first person this week. We'll have you back soon. I can't wait. Uh,